Okay, let's take this head apart. I'll just cut off the strings because the strings are... Oh, oh, it's very stiff. I'm just seeing if it's stiff because it's broken or is it stiff because... I don't know, I think it's just stiff because it's not being used much. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little drop of... What's that there shiny bit? Is that me turning it? It looks like that. Let me look at my other glasses. Shiny bit means it hasn't been turned for many a year. So let me... Oh, and there are different screws put in it. There's a screw there that shouldn't be there if we're talking about originality. And a little drop of 3-in-1 oil, just a touch. And I'll use my screwdriver just to drop it in there. I don't know what the serial numbers mean. Uh, somebody thought they had a 1970 uh, one of these Futurama guitars, but the last two digits were 70. But these guitars weren't made in, in this, this, this Futurama 1 was not made in the 70s, it was made in the 60s. So I think he might have misidentified from the serial number, but he could be right. But it's very unlikely, given the, the history, Selmer. When I was in the pop groups, the local pop groups, we used Selmer amps, Selmer reverbs. Anybody remember Selmer Reverbs? They were great. And uh, we loved it. We remember we had a gig up in a church hall. And one of our songs was Thunder in the Rain by The Move. Woke up one morning half asleep with all my blankets in a heap. Do you remember that one? But you remember that one, but it was in tune. <laughs> well, the song starts off with a big rumble of thunder. Boom. So you pick up the Selmer amp by the handle and you'd lift it about half an inch off the floor and you let go of it and it hits the floor and the big spring inside that made the sounds would rattle boom, like a thunderstorm. And uh, we loved that. And uh, worked. it worked well, so we used it a few times. So, I'll tell you what, I'm going to cut these strings off because they're, I don't like the tension I'm feeling when I turn that, so I don't want to be distracted by the amount of tension on the strings. They feel very, very highly strung, so why they're so highly strung, I don't know, but it feels like there was a lot of tension on the strings. So we'll just take those strings off and Georgie girl's sniffing around. Aren't you Georgie girl? Daddy's baby girl. I think I'm going to take those out because the amount of rubbish that might be done in through the holes could be causing some sort of grief as well. So that you know, in those holes, there's no there's no metal sheath for the holes to go around. So there could be all sorts of gunk, and there could be rust or something like that holding that as well. But I'm not going to put any lubricant down through the the holes that's for sure because it'll just uh, swell the wood and make things ten times worse so I just take off these strings at this end because if I don't Georgie girl will eat them boy they're old those are some strings that you don't see now with rubber wrapping on the end of the strings Georgie girl climbing up the tablecloth if you see it creasing, that's her. She's still hanging. Look, she's. Are you coming up or what? Let me just 
do this one. Okay, I'll show you what I was doing at the other end because the hole was the perfect size of the string. And if you look at that, that's some fat string. I would say that's a 52 or a 50. Um, you see the rubber and the, the cloth, ah, not rubber, it's cloth string. It's very old. But uh, those string are far too fat for these guitars unless you want to really fat sound. And work on the. This is uh, still a little bit stiff. These are very old screws. What it was, 1960. Doesn't feel like that. It's that old. But that's tw that's 62 years ago. 62 years ago. I'm 71. I was 12 in 1960. And different life then, different world. It's like reading a novel. You read the novel, even though you experienced the things yourself from the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, it still looks like you've read a novel and you just sort of remembering what happened in the novel. I was chatting to the man who owns this guitar who was the chairman of a football club and he dealt with councillors like me in the council chamber and when we were chatting he reminded me of all sorts of things that I had forgotten. Things that were important to him but to me they were just sort of another uh, fight that I had to have in the council. So these are pretty good condition. Not seized up quite a bit. They're in pretty good condition. Right, okay, I'll put you there. But he's reminding me about all sorts of incidents that I had forgotten about that I was in the middle of. But it's, as I say, whenever I left the council, whenever I decided to, I had enough, uh, I just switched off the council. I wasn't that interested from then onwards because I had spent so many years fighting the fight, really fighting the fight and costing myself a lot of tr trouble and hassle and consternation and money and that I just decided you know I, I'm not going to live in the past forget the council the end of that but it was corrupt it was devious and the, the chappy who came with this was reminding me of all the things that I fought and the deviousness and the corruption and the, oh, it was just horrendous. And it was a constant battle. You know, it was a constant battle against people who don't think they're being corrupt. They don't actually even know that they're being corrupt. They just think it's okay to do things this way. But that's why they hated me, because I exposed them. Little dents in the thing that keep it lined up. I quite like that. Now, the only thing I'm going to do here is clean this up. Just check the holes are through. Let's look at the other side. I suspect this is hammered in. Let me let me just give it a, a gentle wedge to see if there's any movement in it. No, there's no movement. It's solid. So I'm not going to take that out. But I'll give it a quick clean. Uh, I think all this needs is some protection to make sure that it, that it doesn't get any worse over the years. Now, I don't know whether you can see, can you see all this, the, 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 can you see all the lines in it? I don't know, can you see those lines? The back of the head has got the same sort of lines in it, and I think they're, they're fantastic. I, I wouldn't remove them. See all like little train lines and subway stations and everything on them? I think that's great. I call that a patina. It's probably not a patina, but I'm going to use the term patina because it's part of the character of the guitar. And I just love those old freckles and things. Uh, clean that gently. Now this, it's wood. Right, it's wooden. And there's a bit missing off the end. Well, I'm going to try to, uh, I'm keeping everything original, I'm going to try to patch a piece of wood at the end here and repair it. Not tonight, 
but I am going to try that and, and see what I can do. It's going to take some time to do this guitar because there's lots of little things that need to be done and uh, do them one at a time. So that's the head cleaned and the sides cleaned. And then we'll move on to the the neck, which I know has a problem. It's not bent or anything, but I'll show you in a second. Right, okay, put the lid on that and I'll move the camera. You can see the white cloth beneath, which I'm trying to, because we lost the focus because there was dots on the thing beneath, so I'm trying to keep the focus. Now, it's got a zero fret and it's very dirty, the frets. Uh, I'm going to clean the fretboard, but I'm going to clean it gently. Now the problem with it is the sides. It's as rough as a badger's arse. Now, if you've never felt a badger's arse, you can imagine what this is like. <laughs> it's very, very sharp edges. Now, the owner believes that maybe over the years the wood has shrunk. And he, I think he could be quite right, because these are deadly sharp down the side. You could not play this guitar because they're so sharp. Uh, so I'm, I think he's probably right because it has shrunk over 60 years and that could be because this is gloss painted, the fretboard's gloss painted and you could never keep the wood moist because it's gloss painted. So uh, the wood would naturally not retain any moisture and sink. So. What I'm going to have to do is every single one of these I'm going to have to do individually and, and clean, very dirty. But anyway, I'm going to have to put a shield around it and clean it. Let's look at the back of the neck. Back of the neck's pretty good. One of the very first strunk, skunk stripes. Now this is a, the precursor to the Fender Strat. Uh, when the Fender Strat and the Fender came out, these things were seen as old hat and they sort of more or less vanished. So the Strat and the Telecaster took the place of these things. But they were very popular, these guitars. I've seen quite a few, George Harrison being the one that I like the most. He, he has a picture of him using one of these guitars, a slightly different model, but using one of these guitars. And uh, all sorts of people used them. But as soon as the Strat came in, the Fender came in, the new stuff and, and there's a lot on this that is you know the zero fret the the tuners the shape of the neck the shape of this neck is very very uh, fender like so they fender have borrowed uh, I would say a lot from this or perhaps fender were going and the the uh, Selma people Selmer people borrowed from fender but I tend to think it might be that the fender people borrowed from Selmer. Right, okay, that's it, just lightly cleaned. So let's let's move on to the body, because the body's going to be the most interesting thing, and I'll take it all apart first. Right, I'm going to strip this down. More little rusty screws. Not the right one. Let me just see. I'm going to keep these screws. I'm not going to get rid of them. This one's just sitting there. There's a screw missing, two screws missing. And I think I might have some old screws that I saved the other day for a rainy day that would be this size and the same sort of color and shape. Although I am going to clean those screws up and put some stuff on them to stop them rusting right so that's those off let's see what the bridge does oh the fascinating thing is that you'll find that i find is it's got an adjustable truss rod in there right but if you look at the back the neck has no screws so how is the neck held on is it glued on let's have a look and see let's just put that back and put that right and we'll take this off and have a look at what's underneath it looked quite clean when I took it off now what are these let me just see what those are 
they don't look like they were done at the factory. Neither does that piece of wood. It looks like aftermarket issues happened here. So, but it looks very much like, if you can see in there, that the neck is glued in. Now, A ain't going to take the neck off, that's for sure. So, this is the electrics. Three huge switches. Copper shielded cable. And as I suspected, this cable here, uh, it looks like, yeah, it's, it's much in the same period as the as the guitar so I, I suspect this is correct but down here I am suspecting that something's not right and it's red but let me just push this through what I'm going to do is cut the cable this is the added cable I believe what? I'm not sure what's happening here I, I do have a feeling though that I know what's happening here I think that the jack plug has broken so somebody has run a cable into it and did a sort of half wiring job with one earth going to the jack plug and the other earth going to something else. So let me move the camera and give you a bit more sight of what I'm going to have to do next. Because I want to see what I'm doing. Now what kind of screws are they? Tell me what kind of screws they are. Oh, they're glasses on, right? They're, they're, they're pretty fair, fairly very loose, oh, very loose. Got a bit of felt there. Come back, Paddy Riley. And I actually think that there's a special to take the jack plug out. I think there's a special two prong tool needed, which I don't have. But uh, we'll soon see. When I get it out, I might be able to use the, the vice on it, mm, if I get it out. Right, okay. Let me put that down inside the felt. The guitar slipping and sliding. Okay. Now, what's happening here? Yes, it is a jack plug. There's some sort of ham fisted. Yeah, instead of doing the jack right, what they've done is they've they've kept the original wire on, but they brought another wire in to solder it. So I'm just going to cut it tight. Now the jack plug has been bent out of shape, and I got a feeling we should be able to bend it back into shape again and clean it up, because that's a really good quality jack plug. When I say good quality, I mean uh, it's better than the quality we have now. Look at the thickness of the brass. Anyway, okay. So that's okay, and we can take that away. There you go. Now, the jack plug is an aftermarket, but it's an RS Spares one. But it, that must be an RS Spares one from the 70s, because that's sort of like a Bakelite. Anyway, another part. This doesn't seem to want... Oh, is it, is it got the prongs on it? I think it may have prongs in, but we'll see. I'm going to take this off now because I want to strip down, give it a good clean, and it means taking off the back plate. Um, I was told what is inside this when none of the screws are turning. None of the screws are turning. No little brass screws in this instance. Okay. 
Now I wonder if the other screws at the front are brass as well. I, I didn't... No, they're not. And these are not... Well, they could be brass. It's hard to tell. I haven't got the right glasses on. I'll put them in my jar. Alright, okay, what's underneath? Oh, interesting. Now, can you see what's underneath? Can you see what lies beneath? There are six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven springs. Metal plate with seven springs on it, holding the tremolo arm. The tremolo arm. So let me just put the screwdriver in. Oh, there's a lot of... So there's not much play on that tremolo arm because there's so many springs. But if you wanted more play, you'd take the springs off. Now, they're very rusty, so I'm going to take this trem arm off. Uh, so I can treat it. Nothing more boring than watching somebody turn screws. But it'd be nice to find George Harrison's signature, wouldn't it? Do you think I'm just a bit of an optimist here? Yeah. I wonder if you found, if you did find, uh, you're not going to find, but if you did find George Harrison's signature tucked in there, uh, I, I just wonder the guitar would zoom in price to squillions. Squillions now, it's not coming off. So it has more hidden secrets. Has any of you gone to see BigClive.com yet? BigClive.com I think he's brilliant. I'm going to have to take my time with this to find out what it is. It's uh -huh. Right, okay. I pushed it back a bit and it came off. It's just, and it was just, the screws have got a little indentation in, underneath. So there's the trim arm, and it's very rusty. I'll clean that up to discuss with the owner what he wants to do with this. Uh, I don't think he'll want to chrome it again. I doubt it. This looks like the right screwdriver for that. You see the screw has got a little slot behind it, cleverly made. I think there's a lot of little innovations about this thing that is quite clever. I particularly like the trim arm. That's a good solid trim arm. I wonder what somebody is trying to do drilling holes in it. Maybe I, I got a feeling they probably, yeah, yeah, looking at those holes, I got a feeling somebody probably was beginning the process of putting in uh, humbuckers or pickups and then change their minds. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's probably what it is. Actually, that is what it is. So I'm going to put this up as a, the strip naked part and then we'll do another bit about the various little things that I need to do putting it back together and getting the wiring correct. I haven't tested the wiring yet. Look at the size of the capacitor. I just noticed the capacitor on it. Let me show you it. The capacitors. Look at the size of the capacitor. Look. Massive. I hope those switches are working. Those are the wrong switch hand knobs, by the way. I, f I saw an original guitar and the knobs were... I, you can tell they're wrong because they're covering up the numbers. And, and particularly there, you're covering it up. And the tone is covering it up. The, the knobs were cream 
a little bit smaller with a little gold dash in the middle, a little gold coin type thing in the middle. So I'll take that apart as a separate. And this is loose. I tell you what, let's just. These are intonators which you push one way or the other to get it intonated. But they're pretty solid as well. Oh, I think I see something, right. If you look closely. Another pair of glasses. Uh, I think I see something, but I don't. I thought I saw a screw. But I didn't. The interesting thing about these intonators is that they're not the strings not in the center. The string starts off on the outside, comes further in, and by this one it's nearly in the middle, and then it goes back the other way. So these are wooden, and I'm going to have to make because uh, one of them's missing, so I'm going to have to manufacture one, which should be fun. Oh. <laughs> Don't lose that, or you'll have to manufacture too. I, th you know what I said. I, I see something. I thought I saw a screw down below. That allow me. Oh, I did. There. There's a little screw there, and there's a tiny screw. Is there a tiny screw? Yeah. There's a tiny screw there and a bigger screw there. So somebody's replaced that. Can you see the screws? I don't know where you can see this couple of little screws in there. So let me see what I can see. I've got two pairs of glasses on. And is that a screw or a nut? That's definitely a screw. Let me just see if I can get any purchase on this. I can see that the slot in the screw is almost gone. Look, I can run my... Oh, right, okay. The slot in the screw is almost gone because it's not a screw, it's a nail. Okay, so it was nailed on. Right, okay, so lollipick, lollipop again underneath the bridge. A slightly thinner screwdriver. Don't want to damage the bridge. Right. I'm, I'm levering against the, the felt. Right. Nailed on. Hey, interesting, yeah? Okay, each piece is going to have to be cleaned up separately. The neck being glued on fascinates me. These splits in the wood, you can see lots of cracks in the wood. I'm not going to do anything about them, but I'm going to see what I can do maybe to protect the wood beneath it. Very, very light, very, very light. Let me just pull out. I'm going to give it a bit of a wipe now with soap and water. It's a beautiful color. I don't know whether you can spot the color. Uh, it's sort of a very, very, very deep maroon color. And it's an original color for the uh, Futurama guitars. Uh, I didn't start playing the guitar until I was about 10. And so uh, maybe nine. So I wouldn't have known an awful lot about these guitars. I just know about any guitars that I was given or, or allowed to play. So there you go. So somebody tried, somebody began the process of putting pickups in and then gave up. And they realized it's harder than what they thought. Right. I want to keep the original felt. The actual, actually, the original felt is in very good shape. Oh, look, there's a screw there. There's the screw that was missing. There's the screw that was missing. This is raw footage, as they say. And uh, 
unedited. I think it would be about 45 minutes long. I might take out the more boring stuff, but there you go. That's as far as I'm going to go with that tonight. And I think it looks pretty, pretty interesting to do. I wonder what these costs when they were young, when they were new and <laughs> young. What did I cost when I was young? See the color which shines in the sunlight the way it shines? Really nice colors. Right, so we want to protect that paint to stop it make, getting any worse. But we're not going to put a coat of anything on it. We'll find a way. Alright, put this up and then we'll put in the repair part. <laughs> 